good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining us for another uh, Trusted Advisor Associates webinar. I see we have some folks come back who've been with us before. Welcome back. Hey, Frank, I'm going to put you on the spot just a second and ask you to help me learn how to pronounce your last name. Payak. Payak. Yes, if you rhyme it with kayak, it's close enough. It's not quite, but close enough. Kayak. Excellent. Thank you. There are only three of us left in the world, my sisters and myself. Wow. Mm. I have come, well, Michaelenko is a very uncommon name here in the U.S., more mm. common over in Ukraine, including an English Premier League soccer player. So we've got that going for us. Thank you, Frank. All right, Gina, welcome. I see we've got some, some names that we know and some newcomers. Um, so we are at 11 o'clock exactly. Actually, we're a minute past. So let's go ahead and get this show on the road. Um, welcome to this month's webinar, Does This Make My S Look Big? Self-promotion without self-orientation. Um, just to give you a bit of an understanding of how things will go. Kate, go ahead, if you don't mind. Next slide. Um, we are recording this webinar that so that you and anybody who was at the last minute unable to join us can access it, review it, go back and get these really helpful tips that Kate's going to share with you today. Um, we will send out the links to the recording, the presentation, and additional resources um, on Thursday. We usually send them out about two days after, after the show. Today's presentation will be roughly 30 minutes of presentation, interactive as always, and then an additional 15 minutes at the end for Q&A. You can submit your questions anytime throughout Kate's presentation via the chat function. And if you're willing to go ahead and pull yourself on camera, um, it's always great for us to see who's here and be able to read the faces a little bit as we're sharing our information. Um, throughout the presentation, you'll have the opportunity to use polls, chats, and annotation features, all of the great things that, that Zoom brings to us so that we can fully engage. Most of all, I hope that you enjoy the session today. I know it's going to be fantastic. Okay, let's go ahead. Have to get in our 30 seconds, Trusted Advisor Associates, for those of you who aren't familiar with us. This has been our core element of work for at least 20 years now. We help organizations and individuals within those organizations create deeper trust relationships. Um, you'll have plenty of opportunity to see more that we do on our website. And um, with that, Kate, I am going to turn it over to you to lead us through this topic today. Great. Thank you, Noelle. And welcome, everyone. It is exciting to be here. This is my first time hosting a Trust Matters webinar, though not the first time leading a program. Uh, a little background about me. I am here in Washington, D.C. So if you are in the nation's capital, you might see me walking around with my big lab, George. Um, I, by way of background, I'm a strategy consultant, an executive coach, and a workshop leader for Trusted Advisor Associates. And if I can toot my horn a little bit here, over the last decade or so, I have spent um, the bulk of my time or a great deal of my time helping business professionals across a wide uh, variety of industries have deep trusted relationships by focusing on what it takes to walk the talk of trusted advisorship. Um, and oftentimes in those programs, we talk a lot about something that you may or may not be familiar with, I'm hoping most of you are, which is the trust equation, what it takes to be trustworthy. And a big portion of that trust equation is around limiting or lowering our self-orientation. And one of the questions that's come up to me recently is, okay, Kate, I've got it. We need to be low self-oriented. I get that. But then how do I advocate for myself? How do I bring up a success or a kudo or my expertise without looking highly self-oriented? <laughs> um, I want to keep my trustworthiness intact. And so that's going to be our focus for today. You know, how do we self-promote without having high self-orientation? So I want to get a sense of where we all are on that right now. Um, so we're gonna annotate. If you haven't used annotate in a while, you'll see at the top of the screen, you're viewing Kate Gregory's screen. To the right, there's a little view options arrow. If you click on that, 
you'll be able to open up the annotate toolbar. And I'm curious today, how willing are you to toot your own horn on a scale of zero to 10? Zero meaning you would rather have a root canal than ever toot your own horn. 10 meaning toot toot, I'm here for it, no problem. Five, somewhere in the middle. Um, go ahead and annotate for me now. All right, so it looks like we have a, a nice little cluster in here in the five range and a little bit above, a little bit below. Um, you know, there are some of you, they're, they're kind of moving on towards the 10. So maybe you have some tips that you can share with us as we go through today. And I do want to, um, to offer that if during this webinar, and I should have said this at the beginning, there are comments or, or um, stories that you wanna tell that really punctuate a point or articulate a point, please feel free to come off mute on camera and share with, with us as we go. So while there are a lot of us clustered around five, there are still some of us shooting on down towards the, uh, I'd rather have a root canal realm. So I'm curious, you know, what stops you? What gets in the way from, from sharing for you? What gets in your way? What's a barrier that you encounter? Go ahead and chat that into all right now. What stops you? seeing a lot of themes around not wanting to look arrogant, don't want to make it seem like it's all about me. Some of us have even been conditioned. Um, Andrea, I love seeing that, you know, the childhood conditioning of don't be too big for your britches. You know, we've got to be humble, got to practice that humility is something that I think many of us um, have heard, uh, especially women um, have often heard this, right? We're perceived a little differently if we toot our own horns. So much of what I think stops us can be summed up in a four letter word that begins with F and that word is fear. Um, a lot of what stops us from actually sharing is the fear of how it's gonna be perceived by others. You know, fear is, has always been one of the biggest trust derailers. And I know Noelle and Andrea who are both on the call today have talked about that in the past. Um, and fear gets in our way here too when it comes to self-promoting without self-orientation. And by the way, um, fear includes all of those kissing cousins, things like anxiety, concern, nervousness, stress, unease. All of those are wrapped up into this feeling of fear. And when fear is running the show and our baser instincts kick in and start driving the car, we're not making the best decisions and we may even blow things out of proportion because quite simply, we aren't thinking uh, in the right way. We're thinking all about ourselves, not really about the situation that's going on. Um, and we have a tendency when we do this too, to focus in on all the negatives, all the negative things that could happen. If I share this, they're gonna think I'm arrogant. Instead of saying, if I share this, it might open up a different conversation around what I'm capable of or what I can do. And that fear that we're experiencing resides in that self-orientation of the trust equation, you know, that lower denominator. And so we want, right, we want our self-orientation to be low, but as we're feeling that fear and that anxiety, our self-orientation starts to go up 
and our overall trustworthiness goes down. And if you've ever been in one of our longer workshop programs, um, you may have heard one of us say something like, you know, the S in the trust equation stands for self-orientation, but it also stands for sneaky because it tends to weave its way into conversations, into the way we're operating in sneaky and insidious ways that we're not even really aware of. And that happens for us here today. Um, so we think that it's self-oriented to talk about our successes or our victories or our accomplishments. It's also self-oriented not to share information that may be useful to others and to not share that out of our own fear of looking too self-oriented. Talk about a trust paradox, right? <laughs> um, so this whole self-orientation thing can really wrap you around the axle. So we need to start thinking a little bit differently here, right? So let me ask you this question. And especially for those of you who maybe were closer on the 10 side of our scale a moment ago, why might you want to share a victory or an accomplishment or a success? Go ahead and chat in now. What are some reasons you might want to actually toot that horn? So many great answers here. So I want to I want to dive in on a few of these because there's some really great thoughts that you all have in here. There's that general theme of building credibility uh, for sure. Um, Kendall, um, if you're willing to share, I love your comments. So the team can benefit from my lessons learned and not reinvent the wheel. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Are you willing to come off mute? <laughs> yes, I'm willing to come off mute. So yeah, what I find too often, especially when I work with younger teams who don't have as much experience, I mean, I don't want to sit there and overwhelm them and say, hey, I've done this before, I know everything, which I don't. Um, but on the other hand, I just don't want to see people backtracking or reinventing things that have already been done or known or any knowledge that I can share with them just to help to mentor and teach them. So yeah. it's striking that fine balance between being too over assertive with what you've done and what you know, especially when you get <clears throat> 30 years into your career. Um, but then again, sharing things that are going to benefit their learning so they don't have to learn the hard way like I did, right? So yeah. it's striking that balance. Absolutely. And it, it kind of goes uh, along side by side or it's holding hands with what Frank said about, you know, it, you know, giving an example of a situation of what's, what's possible of a problem that's been solved, right? Mm -hmm. So being able to share the lessons that you've learned so that others can benefit. Um, I love, Gina, you said to inspire confidence and to share what I've learned so it can serve others. Um, I love this word of inspiring confidence, right? It can, it can make people feel more comfortable with you when they know what it is that you are, are happy about, passionate about, interested in, um, that you think is important. It gives them an insight. And we sometimes forget that that's important too, um, that for people to be inspired by what, what we're passionate about and to therefore know how to engage with us, maybe even a little bit differently. Um, there was one earlier. Ah, yes, David knew. Um, you said clients want to know what's working elsewhere in their industry. Can you say a little bit more about that? Sure. Uh, you know, clients oftentimes don't get a chance to see as broadly as we see many times with people, what's going on with uh, both their people they collaborate with in the industry and their competitors. And so if we're able to share uh, things that, that uh, have worked well with them, they really appreciate learning from our experience. Yes, yes, absolutely. You know, we, we see things in a certain perspective and our clients see a very different perspective. So how can we open the aperture so they can see more wild, more widely, not wildly, more widely what's out there um, and what's possible and what's going well and, and how you've contributed and been a part of that 
Um, so there are some real benefits here, and there are some very good reasons why we may want to share or toot our own horn or get comfortable from a, from a personal perspective, from a team perspective, from a client perspective. There are some vastly important reasons, right? Some big reasons why. I think it still requires us, though, to, to have a bit of uh, a mindset shift. Getting comfortable with actually sharing requires us to think a little bit differently about what, what it is that we're actually doing. You know, that we're not tooting our horn so much as, um, you know, we're not selling ourselves so much as we're helping people understand something they didn't know before. Um, we're not being uh, arrogant, right? We're not thinking too much of ourselves. We're actually being confident in what it is that we know. And that's a bit of a mindset shift for us to make. Um, does anybody have an example of a time where they were able to effectively make this mindset shift and toot their own horn? When they were a little nervous, they were able to make the mindset shift occur and they, they went with it and it worked out positively. Anybody have an example to share? I, I do actually, this happened recently. Um, and it was funny, I, I started on a project team working with um, a client and I had a missed opportunity when introducing myself the first time. And I just kind of introduced myself, glossed over, nobody cares about the learning piece. Let's, they're, they're here for other things. Let's just move on. They don't want to hear about my credentials. And after that, I was like, ooh, you know, I probably should have shared something to inspire some confidence so they know that I'm, I'm qualified to be here. So when I had the meeting with just the client on the learning subject, I called that out. I said, you know, I think I think I probably should have done this earlier, but but let me share a little bit with you about my credentials and where I've been and, and what I'm bringing to the table. So I did that um, and they actually appreciated it quite a bit. And I think it helped me be received better when I presented to them um, what I thought the direction should be for the project. So uh, made the, I think it made the conversation go more smoothly than if I hadn't done that. Yes, and I love that it was wrapped up in inspiring their confidence in the team, right? You know, making that mindset shift of how can I help them feel comfortable with what we're, in, you know, kind of embarking on together. Um, it can feel very uncomfortable for a client when they're putting their project in your hands or for a manager to let go of a task to someone, right? How do you make it easier for them? By helping to inspire that confidence that you've got it, that this is something you're really interested and passionate around. Um, thank you for sharing that, Gina. I appreciate it. So while we know, right, we've got an example of where it works, we know we can make this mindset shift, even though we know how, you know, how important it is to shift our mindset because it drives our behaviors, which drive our results. Knowing all that can still be hard. So how do we actually do it? How do we actually do more of this tooting of our horn? So I want to share with you seven tips that can help in different scenarios and situations, but can help us feel more comfortable getting in the practice or the habit of actually doing this, actually tooting our horn. And the first tip I wanna offer um, is to simply do this regularly. Um, get in the habit of updating your managers, your colleagues, your clients regularly on what it is that you're up to and what you're working on make it a part of your regular conversation um, and be curious about what they're up to as well, by the way, so that when you have an accomplishment, when you have a kudo, when you have a success or a piece of expertise that you wanna share, it's gonna be much easier because it's part of the natural rhythm of your conversations. Um, it'll be easier to bring it up. And by the way, you're also creating a place where it's easy for them to bring up to you a success, an expertise, a kudo, an accomplishment. So create this as a pattern of a way of operating regularly. The second tip is to ask for and really listen to feedback. You know, create opportunities to keep the conversation on performance ongoing throughout the relationship. Get in the habit of debriefing, um, asking for, listening to, and sharing feedback regularly. Um, years ago, when I ran a business unit at a, a boutique strategy consulting firm here in the DC area, we had a process that we followed. After every major client event or big engagement or what we would call a key meeting, we, we did a process that we called hot washing. And quite simply, it was an opportunity for us to step back 
right after the, the situation happened and say, okay, what worked well? What were all the pluses? What did I do well? What did you do well? What happened well in this conversation? And then what could we have done better? So we got in this rhythm of giving real candid in the moment um, feedback to one another that was both positive as well as uh, uh, constructive. And it was much easier to bring things up. You know, we got in the habit where after a meeting, I could say, I think I really nailed that presentation. I could have done better on the listening, right? So we were able to talk about our successes and our opportunities um, very, very easily with one another. See, there's a couple of chats coming in. I don't want to miss anything. If you've got questions for sure, um, add them into the chat. And if you have comments, I may miss you if you comment in chat, but feel free to just pop on in and interrupt me. I have no problem with that at all. Um, so tip number one, do it regularly. Tip number two, ask for feedback. Tip three, we're gonna take a little page out of the Scouts uh, rule book here and we're gonna be prepared. Um, take the time to really prepare for these conversations around performance um, or around your expertise or a success that you wanna share. Consider your message. What is it that you want them to know and how might you deliver that? And then also what is it that they might want to hear or maybe even need to hear um, about your performance or your uh, success or your accomplishment. Um, so take time to really sit down and prepare and be thoughtful about it. For those of you who have maybe not stepped into the spotlight so much or not tooted your horn many times in the past, you may also want to prepare yourself, mentally at least, for what it's going to feel like to have the spotlight on you. Um, because if it's something that you haven't done before, you may want to think about, hmm, what's that going to feel like? when someone is focused in on me and someone's asking me then follow-up questions about something I've shared. So mentally prepare and maybe even practice, which brings me to my fourth tip, which is practice, practice accepting compliments. Um, I've noticed so many times that when a compliment is given, and I'm guilty of this too, uh, the recipient, you know, oftentimes dismisses it or goes to that negativity bias and focuses on all the things that could have gone better or didn't go well. There is a time and a place for humility, for sure, but don't overdo it, right? Don't, don't take an opportunity to, um, to bask in a compliment and to, to bask in your passion and your success um, by dismissing it. That dismissal also somewhat dismisses the person who's acknowledging you. Um, Andrea, who's on the, the webinar today, wrote a, a blog post about this that really hit home for me because I found myself constantly belittling people's compliments or, you know, putting, pushing them off me because it was uncomfortable to be in that spotlight. It felt too, you know, braggadocious to use a, a fun word. Um, and what I wasn't realizing was I was really kind of cutting off the opportunity for intimacy. So too often we downplay or dismiss compliments and if you're just, you know, downplaying it and dismissing it and discounting it, others may start to also. So practice accepting compliments. Have a couple phrases in your back pocket. The easiest one is simply a thank you. Um, but you could also say something like, wow, thank you for noticing. Or, you know, I really worked hard on that. Thanks for, thanks for acknowledging that. Or that's so kind of you. You made my day bringing that up. So look for ways to practice accepting compliments so it feels a little bit more comfortable in the moment. So in addition to being acknowledged, the fifth tip is to get in the habit of really acknowledging others. You know, for many of us, tooting our horn is, you know, something that feels uncomfortable. Tooting someone else's horn, on the other hand, is a little bit easier to do, right? Um, one of the tips that we talk about in terms of building credibility in our longer programs is this idea of credentializing a colleague you know, tooting somebody else's horn. When done intentionally and authentically and genuinely, this is a great way of raising the overall team's credibility um, by acknowledging what others have done. And by the way, it may also invite reciprocity. I acknowledge you, you'll acknowledge me. So look for ways to create an environment where this is the norm, where you are acknowledging others. You know, I am fortunate enough to work in this environment uh, with other trusted advisors where I know if after a great day, I get a great kudo, I can call up Noel or I can call up Andrea and say, oh, I got this really great performance review. It was so awesome because we've acknowledged each other so many times that it's comfortable uh, to then share a kudo or to share something that went positive. 
Um, so look to create that environment of acknowledging others and be on the lookout for what others are doing that's really great. It just creates a nice environment in general too. Um, tip number six, use a little humor. And I'm not talking about telling jokes. You don't have to be a great joke teller here. Think more around a clever comment or maybe even some self-deprecating de self remarks, easy for me to say. Um, comedians use this self-deprecating humor a lot to avoid seeming arrogant or pompous um, and to help the audience identify with them. And we can do that too. So it can be disarming. It can break the ice. It can, uh, you know, kind of move your way through some of that awkwardness. Um, so look for ways of using that humor. There is a Wharton study that found to also that people who use humor effectively are seen as more competent and confident and oftentimes are chosen to lead teams or lead uh, parts of projects because they're simply seen as being more capable. Um, there's also studies from the Mayo Clinic that show that humor and laughter is a great way of reducing stress and anxiety. So if you feel a little uncomfortable about bringing up you know, a, 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 an accomplishment or a success story, use a little humor to do so and it'll help manage that anxiety for yourself. So get comfortable using the humor. And last, but certainly not least, the last tip I wanna share is to be authentic. Be real about it. If it's making you uncomfortable, you might wanna say, oh, this is so uncomfortable to say this, but I gotta share, right? We've talked about in our programs, a tried and true tip for getting into conversations that are difficult for us. And that, that technique is called name it and claim it. And a big portion of that technique is around the use of caveats. So caveats are your best friend. And sure, they're that early warning that, that difficult news may be coming, but they're also uh, a way of managing our own feelings and managing our self-orientation by calling out what it is that's making it hard for us to say the thing that needs to be said. So what are caveats and how might we use them here? Well, here's some examples. At the risk of looking arrogant, or I'm not sure how to share this, or I feel a little awkward bringing this up, or I'm so excited I just have to share, or so can I make it all about me for a minute? Or I'm not sure how to bring this up without looking like I'm tooting my own horn. These are all examples of caveats that can help you get into the conversation you need to have by, uh, by acknowledging what's making it hard for you to say it. And the caveat should be tailored, of course, to you, the person who's sharing, um, but also to the context and the person who's listening. So I'm curious from you all, what is an example of a caveat that you would use or maybe have used to, to bring up a success or a kudo that you wanna share? Go ahead and tap that in now. All right, so yes, we've got some great ones. Uh, let me be honest with you, um, uh, great point. Um, I'm so excited, I just have to share. Toot, 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 great one. Um, before we begin, let's talk about me. You know, there's a really funny skit that says, um, I, you know, and I think one of the questions Frank you had was, you know, what are some examples of using humor effectively? Um, I think a little thing like that, like before we begin, can we talk about me for a second? You know, done in the right spirit and the right tone can be really funny, or even the one that's on the screen here. So can I make it all about me for a second? Or toot, toot, toot. 
all of those are some great ways of using that self-deprecating humor. Um, and you can figure out, you know, what works best for you personally. Um, but does that help answer your question, Frank? Great. Thanks for the head nods there. Appreciate it. So some great caveats in there. I appreciate all those examples. Um, so seven tips just kind of to wrap us up. What are our seven tips? Of course, update regularly, ask for feedback, prepare, practice accepting those compliments, acknowledge others and create that environment that that's what we do, use humor and be authentic. So I'm curious from you all, um, what which of these tips might you try and deploy um, when having to uh, bring up a success or advocate for yourself? Go ahead and annotate now. Which ones sound like ones you might add to your repertoire? So I want to pause there for a second before we start to wrap up, because there were several of you that were on the upper half of the scale of zero to 10 um, in terms of how willing are you to toot your horn. So I'm curious, what are some of the tips that you've used or that you think might be helpful to others on the call today? Does anybody have a tip that they are willing to share in addition to these seven? Any additional tips? Either put it in chat or if you're brave, come off mute and join into the conversation here. Ah, Frank, ask for permission to share. Yes, can you talk a little bit more about that, Frank? Because I think that's really, uh, it's a really good one. It's easier to do than describe, I think. But, um, yeah you have something to share, you say, I, I'm not sure, this may not seem relevant, but I think it is, or, or I, I hope this will be helpful. Uh, mm -hmm. And just sort of be a little tentative about what you're gonna tell them. And it may or may not be a brag, but it's certainly an experience you've had, something you've learned. Um, if, you, if you share things as something you've learned as opposed to something you've done, even if there's a, a brag implied, I think it's, um, less arrogant. Yeah, so kind of building in that humility into how you share, right? Yes. Here's something I've learned in my experience, you know, could I take a moment and share something I've learned along the way? Um, I think that's, I think that's really true. And I love this idea of asking permission. Um, you know, it's something that we, we often tout as a tip when we have to get into difficult conversations or bring up things that are uncomfortable for us. So much like the caveat, the asking permission, you know, could I take a moment to share something I've learned along the way? Um, I think is a, is a beautiful way of keeping your humility intact, um, but also getting out what you wanna share. Thank you for that, it's a great tip. I'm looking in chat. Um, I think the tone makes all the difference too. Um, absolutely, tone driven by mindset. Yeah, thanks, Andrea. I agree with that too. Um, David, I try to share successes that include both my team and the client's team, where the glory can be shared broadly. That's really important too, David. Would you would you mind coming off mute and sharing a little bit more about that? Sure. I mean, it, it's always good. Client likes to hear about where their team is doing well with it and so try to make sure that when the client does a good job in working with us on something that it's not just all about us but it's about them too and mm -hmm. it reinforces teamwork and it maybe helps build the bridge to working together more with the client absolutely absolutely so looking to create that environment uh where you you are you're trying to catch people doing things that are awesome um and not just catching yourself doing something awesome but catching the client's team your team uh, the group is, as a whole. Well, this has been fun. I'm noticing time. We're already, gosh, where does the time go? It's already 1135. Um, so 
again, a lot of this, it's not, it's not, you know, as everything else we say about trusted advisorship, this is simple. It's just not always easy to do. So I'm curious for, for you all, um, what is your biggest takeaway from today? If you had to sum up six months from now, you know, one thing that you kind of are taking away from this conversation today, what would that be? If you would go ahead and chat that in now. I love all these takeaways and I'd love to talk about all of them, but I know some of you are on a time constraint here. So before, you know, before we log off, I will hang on for a while if anybody uh, wants to talk about anything in addition or has questions. Um, but before I completely log out or you log out, if you would please answer, um, Vicki's going to launch a poll for us now, um, just to get a sense of how helpful was this webinar for you today. So if you would take a moment um, and, uh, answer that for us and then I will hang out and answer any questions that you might have. Vicki, I'm not able to completely see. So when, when you think we're at about um, done, you can go ahead and share. All right, so any questions or any other comments that you weren't able to share during the webinar itself? Any other comments that you wanna share or, or bring up? Kate, I'm gonna put us both on the spot a little bit because I love, you know how much I love the humor tip and how important it is not to laugh at things, poke fun at things, poke fun at people, but to bring some levity to our professional relationships. And I love that tip. Uh, but then when, was it Frank who asked, can you give me an example of humor? I was sitting there going, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> And I know you, your sense of humor, you're so witty and you're so good at that in the moment. Mm. I just wondered if you could think of, and I'm, I'm challenging myself too, to think of other examples of how to kind of bring humor, self-deprecation, because I think it's really under-leveraged. Yes. Um, it's a great question. You know, when you were asked, you know, can you think of something? Like, can you think of the definition of this word? You can never think of it, or I can at least. Um, I think, you know, little things like the toot, 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 you know, like, you know, little humorous uh, moments like that, or um, pointing out a flaw, you know, I, one of the, one moment that I can remember, I was leading a workshop and I was taking down and I have a little dyslexia. So I was taking down on the chart, I was writing down the ground rules that people are offering. And one of the ones that I wrote was, they had said, don't beat a dead horse. And I wrote, don't be a dead horse. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and I didn't see it. And somebody was like, oh, you need to fix that word. And I was like, what word? I, I didn't see it. And, um, and uh, you know, it, it finally registered. They're like, no, you wrote, don't be a dead horse. And I was like, oh, no, I meant that. Here's the other one that you said was don't beat a dead horse. You know, so just poking a little fun at myself, just being a little light with it. Um, being willing to, to acknowledge mistakes in a humorous way versus, oh my gosh, I'm devastated. I made a mistake on the chart. You know, it just makes everyone feel a little bit lighter. Um, um, Frank, I love, I suggest you take notes when you find yourself using humor. Yes. <laughs> so I could share some examples. It would be great. Um, absolutely. You Anybody know, else use it effectively? Yeah. I can think of an example where you've done it. 
Charlie uses a phrase, and I'm, sh I'm pretty sure it's not his, he's just borrowed it from somewhere, Charlie Green, with our, the founder of Trusted Advisor Associates, one of the original authors of the Trusted Advisor. You know, he'll say, you're never as good or as bad as others think you are. And that could be a nice like caveat or lead in. Well, I know I'm, I'm not nearly as good or as bad as others think I am, or I don't know. I was just thinking something, um, but there's that phrase, you know, like your dog or there's something out there about, you know, how much adoration you get from your dog or little kids and mm -hmm. start with something like, you know, while I'm, I'm not nearly as good as my dog thinks I am. I am proud of X, Y, Z accomplishment or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, you know, sometimes even saying the word humor, people think it's got to be like a really funny Will Ferrell moment, you know, maybe a, a better word. Um, and, and Frank, thank you for asking this because this is some new content we're talking about, but maybe a, a better word is keep it light. You know, maybe it's not just use humor, but keep it a little light, hold it a little lightly. Um, and, and that might be another way of thinking about this. Um, you know, the other, you know, in terms of bringing something up, you know, can I just make it all about me for a moment? I can't remember who put it in chat, but it was very similar to the caveat that I had, you know, let's, you know, let's not, sorry, don't talk about myself so much. What do you think about me? You know, like those funny kind of moments, um, you know, where you, you know, you just kind of are a little calling it out that you're making it all about you. Um, so it's a great point, Frank, and one that I think we do need to write down some examples for sure. Any other kind of takeaways or questions from folks? Hey, Carla posted one in chat. Yes. She's a fellow GIF fan. Ah, uh, yes. I like to leverage the gifts with my bosses and peers. Absolutely. Um, a poof of sparkles. My work here is done. That's a great one. That's a great um, humorous nod, right? Like poof. Um, love that. It's like that or like just like even like generational things and like um, I know one of my I, I support two executives and one of them is a Schitt's Creek fan it's a Canadian show for anyone that's not familiar so like I have like where the dad is walking by the the loser in the truck doing a high five with a straight serious face like leveraging stuff like that when when they're asking for support because like the people that I support are very humble and they don't like to ask for help. Mm. And that's what I'm here to do. So like when, like to like create that partnership and like just keep it light and keep it fun and joke around a little bit, we're still getting our work done. Right, right. It's not taking away, you're not going through a whole stand-up routine. You're just taking a moment to acknowledge something in a, in like, a life. I ask, I ask a question and I get no response. So then there's a, a Fresh Prince one where Will's standing in the empty house walking around. Like, wow, well, <laughs> anybody going to listen to me here? Yes. Yeah. It's disarming. It's disarming and it's and it breaks that awkward uh, kind of <laughs> silence out in, in virtual land or in uh, internet land. Like, hello. Um, I love Remember that. me? I'm still over here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I like Frank, I like yours. Um, I sometimes I say my sisters would roll my eyes to hear me say this dot dot dot. I love that too. Right? Or this would embarrass my kids. Or, you know, so there's things like that that you can say too that I think would be fun. And I am noticing time. I do want to just point out for folks, um, we do have lots of resources that are available for you. Um, of course, going out to the uh, Trusted Advisor site, um, there are podcast blogs, ebooks, videos, et cetera. Um, so please feel free to, to take a peruse, uh, a perusal of that site. And we will be having um, next month. Um, a nice celebration of the 10 year anniversary of the Trusted Advisor Field Book. Um, so, Noelle will be with Charlie and Andrea, the two authors. And, Andrea, it's great to have you here today, too. Um, also, you have, we have our video learning series, we have uh, the Trusted Advisor Academy, um, lots of tips on social media, et cetera. So, lots of resources available for you. Um, but it was so fun to be with you all today. I appreciate your time. Um, thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you on another Trust Matters blog or webinar. <laughs> Talk to you soon.